Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Debbie Dubois and this channel is called What on New Earth? I am an awakening creator being for lack of better terminology, just like you. And I'm on this wild and crazy ride, just like you. And uh, I like to talk about it and I like to learn about it and I like to share. So I hope you'll share any comments that you have below as we go through all this. In my last video, I touched quite a bit on the inner being, and I felt that it would be really helpful to go a little bit more into the inner being and maybe share just a little bit of the connection, the reconnection, the acknowledgement, the, um, I wanna say the greater level of connection that I've gotten with my inner being and this has been in a pretty recent period of time. Um, looking back to some of Athena's material, she was saying, and not only her, but several other people were talking about how December was a really big shift for us. There was a lot of light coming in at that time. And there have been some other events in the realms that through February and into March, we began integrating more and more of our inner being. So in one of the videos that Athena did, she challenged us to, you know, everyone can now find out their ancient name. And it's really interesting because part of this whole process of reconnecting with my inner being is an acknowledgement that I really am aware that the inner being has been with me the whole entire time. And I know that in my journey, um, I've encountered a lot of people who have had, I want to say, transcendental experiences, out-of-body experiences, um, I want to say connection with other beings in other realms. And I remember wondering, what's wrong with me? <laughs> what's wrong with me? You know, I'm not seeing ascended masters. I mean, I could always connect with those beings through other people. And I definitely believe in the existence of these beings for sure. Um, and I know that people have experiences of them, but me personally, I never really felt that that was something that I had as a priority for me. And I remember um, a particular friend of mine asking me, have you gone in yet to see who you are? And I'm like, no, I'm just me. I'm Debbie. I'm me. <laughs> and yet I also know that I've had a lot of guidance. And so there was this question, who is guiding me? Right. But I always had the sense that it was me. And I never had the ability to, like someone would say, oh, go find out what angel you're talking to. Just ask them their name. And I never could do that. And I'll tell you why. I didn't want to make shit up in my head. I just didn't. And if I wasn't getting it clearly and giving it clearly, like this is Archangel Michael in your field, you know, I didn't want to make anything up in my head. And, um, and I'm not saying that other people are that do that. I just personally did not have that kind of a connection to the other side, but I did have a really strong connection to a knowing that I felt certain of. And when I started going through all of this discovery process real recently, um, I started to understand that this was my greater being. This was my oversoul. This is the higher self. This is the person, the being, um, the energy, if you will, that has been guiding me my entire life. And different people have had different kinds of wake up experiences. Um, I don't think I actually had a wake up experience in this lifetime in that I can't remember a time when I didn't have this guidance. I can't remember a time when I didn't understand that the world's totally upside down and that things are just not not right. You know, this this is like completely counterintuitive to to what I know to be true. And I struggled with that for a long, long time. Um, so anyways, there was this challenge, you know, everyone has access now to their ancient name. And I'm like, yeah, no, not doing it. You know, I just, hands down, not doing it. You know, not taking that challenge. 
but it had it was in it was in my consciousness so i guess maybe my inner being was prompting me so i decided well instead of resisting why don't i open it up for the inner being to reveal how to find that name right because i didn't have any idea i didn't want to go into a meditation and say okay tell me who i'm talking to i just didn't so my inner being knowing me basically gave me directions okay you want to learn how to do this let's do this go ahead and research ancient names and just start writing down some names that resonate inside your heart you know they just they feel right something feels right about it you don't have to make any decisions or narrow it down but just at least do this investigation so i did and i don't know i spent about two hours and i i do know that any uh any of the names that i came up with began with a so it was an ah sound the first sound was anya and i said well anya is a name i've always resonated with and and Aurora and A and A. And so I, I started writing down, I don't know, I think I came up with a list of maybe 12 names that began with A that I was like, this seems more likely than something else. So, and then I was looking at words that be, uh, names that began with T and Z and D and all these. And I'm like, yep, no, yep, no. I knew, I did know that much. I was like, no, it's it's an ah sound. It's a, it's, it's I, I felt that much I knew. So it's like, what do you know? Your inner being, if you put your, if you put your hand on your heart and you ask, what do you know? That, that for me is how I contact my inner being, always. So, you know, I was like, okay, it's an ah sound. I know this. So I did this for about two hours before, I, before going to bed. And, um, so I went to sleep and of course, no surprise, I was dreaming about, you know, all these names running through my head and I was woken up out of sleep and I heard Aniana and I was like, did I just hear another name? Is this name on my list or is this a name that I put on my list that they're trying to point out to me? So I pulled out my phone. I realized I had not put that on my list. I put it on my list. I went back to sleep and I said, okay. So there's another possibility. I woke up in the morning with the loudest, clearest voice I have ever heard, and it was Aniyana, 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 Aniyana. And I went, are you trying to tell me there's a Y? Because I had spelled it A-N-I-A-N-A. -I, -A. I said, are you trying to let me know that it's Aniyana with a Y. And the, the answer was just yes. And I said, oh my God, okay. So I picked up my phone and I typed in Aniyana. So anyways, I was given another assignment because I was half asleep. So it was very clear. It was very clear. And I just heard, go look it up. And, I, and what I mean by that is I had been looking at meanings of different names as I was going. It was part of the process. Like, oh, wow. Like, I, I think I, I said um, ancient Hebrew names and ancient um, Greek names and ancient, you know, I was looking for an ancient name. And that, that was how I started coming up with all of these lists. So anyways, I, um, I followed my inner guidance and I went to look up Aniyana. So let me tell you what Aniyana means. So Yani means I am, which I thought was really funny. I was like, okay, I'm listening. I am, but also gift of God's favor. And this is Hebrew, okay? I was told to go look at the Hebrew translations. And then Yana is God is gracious, he speaks. And I started to realize when I, when I read what that means, I am, God is gracious, he speaks. I started to understand that the name that I chose was a name that said, I am God. I am part of all that is. So I am God, the graciousness of God, the gift of God's favor, and he speaks through me. And I went, Aniana, that's who I've been. That's who I've always been. I've always been the being, the expanded being of me has always been a communicator, has always had the need to express. 
and to express the highest expression that I can. Now, does that mean I do it all the time? No. <laughs> No, I don't. Sometimes I'm really not a good communicator or I communicate things I would really like to not communicate. But what I'm trying to say is overall purpose. When I started looking at the ancient being, the ancient name, the inner being, this being of me that's being brought into this vehicle, it was like, oh, my God, I'm not making that up. That's not imagination. That was being guided and led by my own hand to lead me back to who I am. What I know is it's leading me back to incorporate that bigger essence of me into me. And it was meant to be an exercise in showing me that I've limited myself quite a bit. You know, I've limited myself by not wanting to be wrong, right? I've limited myself in, um, like trying to keep ego in check. I've limited myself in many ways. And this was an exercise that my inner being showed me. So Aniana, you know, I honor that inner being. So, so why is this connection so crucial, right? Why, why is this the, I want to say this is, is how the game is wrapping up. What is happening right now during the awakening process and why? What I'm being shown and what I've resonated with is that we are all creator beings. Yes, we are part of the one and we have a very, um, you know, a cohesive oneness in the Godhead, but we also have our individual aspects, our individual God creator aspects. Um, and those right now, have been put in a game, we've chosen to go into a game where we're gonna forget that. And I think I touched on that in my last video was, you know, it's the paper bag over the head and why did we do this? Why would we want to? Well, the experience of being disempowered was something that a God never experienced before, right? The God self would go in and play in a bunch of different realms and video games and, and knew who it was. It's kind of like, it started being revealed to me the nature of reality when I realized one day that my daughter plays some video games I would never want to play. <laughs> okay. I mean like zombies and, and you know, them putting their characters on hooks and blood. And I'm like, why are you playing this kind of game? Whereas I might play something like animal crossing, which is creating a little reality with all these harmless little, wonderful little characters that become your friends <laughs> and you build reality. But, I started to understand that when we're in a video game, we never really confuse the fact that we're in a video game. Now, some things might stress us out if we're playing a game that's not of our vibration. If I went in to play her zombie game and I had zombies coming after me trying to put me on a meat hook, even though I know it's not real and even though I know they're not gonna get me, I'm still gonna start, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Well, they like that experience. They like the experience of that, her and a couple of her friends that play this game. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything with zombie noises, all right? But the point is, is that my daughter, when she plays this game, she knows that it's not real. She knows that she can turn it off anytime, reset the game, but she still screams and she still hollers and her and her friend run around and, you know, they have a lot of fun playing the game. So from this realm, this where we are right now, is from what I understand, what a unique experience and that you go into the game and you forget who you are. So that's kind of like going into one of those zombie games and thinking you're in the zombie game and that it's real and that it's reality. And that's a whole heck of a lot of a different experience, right? So in order for us to wake up to the truth, I mean, we can know it in our heads and we can hear it and we can say we believe it and we can believe it. But the only way we're really going to know that we are creator beings is for our creator being self to embody and to really, really show that our connection is through this essence of this creator being, that that's why we're here. Um, it, it's to come conscious in the game 
And not everyone has that goal. Not everyone wants to wake up in the game. I know I want to wake up in the game. If you want to wake up in the game, the way to do that is to really get to know your inner being and let your inner being guide you and to not consent to anybody outside of yourself taking the steering wheel. And that goes against everything we're programmed to do here. So it is eventually the unveiling of the truth of who you are to connect with this inner being. But the reason why for me it's so critical is um, how can you how can you get to a place? <laughs> it, you know what it is? It goes back to when I was 18 years old. I remember saying to myself, I want to get to a place where no one can burn out my candle, where no one can make me feel, in other words, project onto others, no one can make me feel like I'm not good enough or that I'm this or I'm that. Um, and that was my goal from a very young age to which I have continually worked towards. So my connection with my inner being is one that is so sacred because it is the place where I can compare my own knowing, like I can go into that heart center, put my hand on my heart, and I can ask myself in any situation, what do I know about this? And that is my, that is my discernment. So when I hear something outside of myself, my, my connection with my inner being is what tells me what something really means or that it isn't a vibrational match um, or it will reveal more information than is given. When you start having this inner being connection, you no longer doubt yourself. You no longer need to look to others to establish your identity, your value, your worth. Um, it's extremely helpful in breaking codependency where you feel like you're connected with someone else or other people in such a way that, gosh, if something happened with that connection, you would be destroyed. Um, it's extremely helpful for the narcissistic empath connection. Um, on both sides, because both sides of that equation, the inner being is not developed, the inner being is not um, in true connection with the person. Um, because if you, if you knew who you were inside, there'd be no reason to dominate another, try to control another, or to try to be controlled. You would just be in constant contact with this essence of who you are. Now, for what it's like to work with this, and I, I'm, I'm going to assume that at this point, anyone who's really listening to my video is probably working with their inner being already. Now, I have had conversations with people when I would describe my interactions with the inner being, they would say, well, I'm not having that experience. And yet, when we talk, they would tell me some changes they're making to their life because they felt guided inside to eliminate certain medications or change the way they eat or um, work on certain things. And I'm like, yeah, that's your inner being. <laughs> that's it. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, your inner being is that piece of you that knows what's best for you. So I'm getting ready to publish an article that will be coming out shortly about a very significant experience that I had. Um, you know, working with the inner being, in this article does explain a particular episode. I had five hours with my inner being one night. She woke me up in the middle of the night. I had only been sleeping three hours and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm awake. Okay, what's going on? And immediately, you know, I just was like, okay, what? Am, why am I so wide awake? Put the hand on the heart. And all of a sudden it was like, yeah, we're gonna go through some stuff. And I even say, I say it in an article, but it's, it's a little bit like um, Scrooge or um, not quite in the same way, but Scrooge or It's a Wonderful Life when you're having a, a review of where you've been and then questions and asking you, you know, what about this? What about that? And having a full, complete full dialogue and understanding of what has happened and why it's happened and why it needs to shift and what needs to happen for it to shift. If you want to know my personal experience, because you will probably get a lot out of that um, in terms of, you know, what it's like to work with that, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'll link the article below. Um, but when I'm working with the inner being, it's, it's such an incredible relief because it's always a place to go when you start doubting yourself because we doubt ourselves because our mind has been our mind has been at the helm for so long and of course other programs have been at the helm for so long other people that we've given our power away to have been at the helm for so long we've been living in a realm where the total objective is to hand over the steering wheel to somebody else and then what happens when you do that and you forget that you're the one that should be driving or that you're the one that drives, right? So people react in such different ways to this and that's what's made it such a plethora of information and data to be collected because how one person handles her turning over the steering wheel, some people will be like, oh my God, just please take the steering wheel. I just wanna sit back and relax and kick my feet back up and they don't realize as they're doing that, the other person's taking total control and I mean systems of government, everything else, and then there's other people that are like, oh, you're not going to control me. Are you kidding? I'm going to do everything I can to stay in control and then manipulate and control and keep your hands on the steering wheel. So the experience of, you know, this this play with empowerment versus disempowerment, this um, empathy versus the narcissistic control, all of these polarities are playing out because we're not connected with our inner being because we were able to be give up the the steering wheel and then and then if that wasn't enough we have people who decided they wanted all the control and the hands on the steering wheel started doing all kinds of shit and crap to us right to make us disempowered more and more and more and more and some of those things were not things that we had originally agreed to when we entered this game so it would stand to reason that if we are going to people call it ascend i tend to think of it as awaken to because how can you ascend to something that you already are you are a creator being how can you send to be that but you need to awaken to it and you need to remember you know be you need to remember remember your connection right so it makes perfect sense that in order to get to that place the main step would be this reconnection with our inner being once we reconnect fully with our inner being and we work through a lot of the things that um, have stopped us from understanding that we are creator beings, that we have the ability to create our reality, that we have the steering wheel of our own um, of our own creation. Until we learn that, it's very hard to take the leap to uh, a reality, a realm, an existence, a new earth space, whatever you want to call it, where none of the dark polarity exists because polarity is born out of you losing connection with that inner being now thank goodness the inner being was never completely removed from us although i can't say that for everyone who knows who knows in this realm i i don't know you know where some people completely disconnected from their inner being and trapped and i have a feeling that there's been the gamut of experiences in my consciousness in my own personal experience i have not had that the last thing i really wanted to talk about is um something that really cemented and crystallized um the inner being experience and I've got to say that this is not coming from firsthand experience. And, you know, I think a lot of people emphasize firsthand experience as being really important. And, and I agree with that. When you, when you hear things from people that have experienced things firsthand, it is a lot more powerful than if you hear someone telling something that someone else experienced. However, I have also come to the realization that not all of us have the same skills, talents, and abilities, right? Whereas I may have the ability to turn on a camera and a light and just speak right to the camera and feel really at home and really comfortable, whereas someone else might not. 
There are other people that will go out of body literally at will or on a regular basis and experience things on the other side. Or someone like Athena that can read, read these Akashic records as if they're videos from each person's perspective. Still haven't quite you know, figured out how she's doing that. If it's out of body, I don't think it is, but I'll have to ask her. We'll ask her when we have an interview with her. But anyways, there is someone that I have been watching a lot of and that was a person named Darius Wright. Um, I'm gonna link his information below. He puts a sampling of his information on YouTube and then he has a membership site. It's really reasonable for all of the plethora of experiences that he shares in videos. Um, but I've been watching a lot of his information on this inner being confirmation path um, and his experiences of actually leaving the physical body finding out the nature of reality on the other side and you know his experience with his inner being being very very physical and real he says more real than it is here so i kind of get that because as i go on this journey remainder of what i consider this journey to the end of this experience of duality you know regardless of how it happens we're all going to a place where we remember who we are one way or another as i go through this um i don't have like the the full confirmation because i i haven't stepped out of my body i know a lot of people have had the experience of floating over their body i know my best friend vicky did when she was little and she doesn't like study this stuff she just knows hey there's something real about it because i experienced it and i've heard so many people experiencing it but i've been very interested in listening to the what he's seeing on the other side and um the experiences are um very very real you know and and i do have this gift of being able to kind of go along when i hear about someone's experiences i get very vivid pictures of being there myself so i guess what i'm trying to say is that everybody has different skills and talents and instead of everybody having to get their own first-hand experiences i don't know how long it would take me to go out of body i don't know if i'm even interested in going out of body but i am interested in people's experiences i consider that first-hand research when i sit and i listen and then i have my hand on my heart and i'm listening with my heart i'm listening to my inner being and my inner being is saying yes that's the way it is yes you've been there many times and and that that I feel is perfectly acceptable. Yes, it's great if you can get your own information, but to be able to discern is even more important because let's face it, we're wrapping up this dystopian nightmare very soon. I'm hoping like within a couple years, if not sooner. And I really don't want to learn how to be an expert in everything. Who has time for that? I mean, I'm just trying to up my my soul, you know, cellular makeup and shift the vibrations and all of that, which is really exhausting. Um, this is one of the reasons why the inner being connection is so important because it enables you to tell what parts of information is being given to you is real and what's not real. All you have to do is say, what do I know? What do I know? And when you do, your inner being will start speaking to you. That inner being is dying to hear from you. That inner being would love nothing more than to be the helper that we all need to get through this discernment. So I just, I think I will leave it there um the inner being connection that i have been experiencing is one that i know everybody is experiencing at different levels and if this resonates with you you know it might be either confirmation of an experience that you're having already or maybe it's something you want to explore there is nothing more comforting especially and i talk about i talk about triggers and stuff in my article and i'm going to talk about triggers um in in another video that's coming up soon because what i found about triggers is that triggers are literally if you call it gaslighting call it triggers whatever you want those experiences are really telling you 
what you're sensitive to or testing to see if you're still sensitive to things and that's inner being work. So we're going to do that. We're going to talk about triggers. We're going to talk about the narcissistic empath template and the polarity of, you know, the existence here as it relates to the inner being and depending upon what side of that equation you're on, whether you tend to be someone who really wants to control their environment um, or someone who'd rather put their foot up and let someone else drive the car. Either way, we're bringing polarization, we're bringing those polar opposites to center and it's done through your connection with the inner being. So good luck on the inner being journey. I will be back with another video. I'm so honored that you spent time with me. I welcome comments and I am seriously, and I've already said this in the last video, I am going to create a group, either Telegram chat, I might do both, Telegram chat and Zoom. And I see myself doing it within the next several weeks. If you're interested in participating, it's all free. It's just for fun. It's just to help us spend some good quality time together while we witness all of this stuff happening. So until next time, take care and namaste.